Welcome to Dan's Messy Garage. I am in my messy garage, and today I'm going to be starting to assemble my 200 cubic inch six cylinder engine out, that I pulled out of the 67 Falcon. I took the rotating assembly, which is all the pistons and rods and rings and bearings, up to the machine shop, happens to be a Napa Auto Supply in Commerce, Michigan, and I had them balance everything. They polished the crank, balanced it up, and everything's in really good shape, ready to go. So I bought new bearings. They came in, came in this box. That's what I'm putting in now. I'm going to show you how that goes together. These are the main bearing caps, and they all have numbers on them with an arrow. Just number one facing forward, two, three, four. This one says T. That's the thrust bearing. That keeps the crankshaft centered in the block and keeps it from flopping back and forth. And I've already put in some bearings. I'm going to show you how they go in. They have this uh, notch or a bump sticking out of the side of the bearing. And the journal or the, I don't know what you call that, register or space in the block. Oh, make sure everything's clean and dry. I want to do this dry, put bearings in dry, because I don't want any obstructions or anything here that's going to make the bearing clearance tighter than it has to be. These are 10 under bearings. The crank was turned 10-10. That means mains were 10 under and the rods are all 10 under. But that's how they go in. They just slip right in there. And the other one slips in the cap. Same thing, got that notch right there that you have to line things up. And then I'll, I'll put in number, that be number six there, back one of seven. So number six, grab the next one here. They come in sets or pairs. Grab the next pair. Take one of the shells, these bearing shells. Look for that bump out, notch in the block. Put that in there. Push her down flush. Then we find the number six cap. It's that one. Make sure that's dry, which it is. Take our bearing. Line up the bump out. With, whoops. This is tough to do one-handed here. Okay. Let me see if I can just uh, hold it with my legs here. Bump out in the notch. Push her down in there. And what I do is put it up on the flat part of the block and make sure, whoops, ooh, almost dropped it. Make sure it's seated in there well. And then the last one also has another seal, or a seal, not another, has a seal. It's that rubber ring that goes around. I want to drop and nick these things up. There's a rubber lip seal that goes in there. You got to make sure you put one in the block, one in the cap, then the bearing, which would be the last bearing in the box right here. And once I get all these in, I'm going to uh, put you guys up on a tripod 
so I'm not giving you seasickness here. And I'll drop the, the crank in there. Now, the um, crank needs to be oiled and all these bearings need to be oiled when you put the crank in. Oh, this is tough one-handed. All right, I'm just going to have to get you set up, and I'll put the bearing in this last cap when I have two hands. So I'll be back in a flash. Okay, I got all the bearings in. I gave them a coat of oil. Got the crank all oiled up. I'm going to pick it up, set it down in there. Now you want to put it in straight and don't drop it. You got to kind of go in nice and easy. And one thing I would need to do is uh, make sure that these thrust bearings have oil on the sides and on the crank also. Okay, I did that off camera, of course, because you're on a tripod, and I'm off here to the side. All right, so let's pick this thing up. Jump up here. Line it up, go down slow and easy. Just like that. The crank was oiled, the bearings are oiled. It spins in there nice and easy. Of course, this was a good running engine. I pulled it apart anyways, just, you know, why not? I got all winter to, whoops, almost knocked you guys over. I got all winter to do stuff, so. But that's in there. Everything has to be very clean when you do this. My cylinders are all clean. The fact that you get some oil on them. I just doused everything with brake clean after I dingle ball honed them. You know, like a garage honing. But they're all in good shape. All the pistons and everything were in good shape. So, that's how you put a crank in. And then take these main bearing caps, put them in place with the oil. And then there's, these are two bolt mains. It's only a six cylinder. And you torque them down with a torque wrench. I like to go in stages. Let's say they're 75 pounds, because I'd have to look up the torque spec. But I'll go like 25 pounds, 50 pounds, and then 75. So I'll do them all 25, and then like all next stage, halfway up to the full torque, and then final torque. And each time you torque one, you want to make sure that you can still rotate the crank. You want to make sure that it spins. So let me get going on that. I got to look up the torque spec, dig out my torque wrench, and um, find the bolts. I cleaned all everything up, The all everything, that's good English there. The main caps and the bolts, a bunch of engine parts in my ultrasonic cleaner over there. There's some other videos on that. And uh, I got to find those bolts, oil them up, and start assembling. Okay, I have all the caps set in place. They take a three-quarter inch socket. I'm going to use half-inch drive. Now, these caps, they actually lock down inside the groove. Because the cap is a little wider than the register or groove in the block. So you got to kind of pound them down in there to get them to seat. You can hear the tone change once you get it tight.
when you tighten the bolts, it'll snug them down in there too. But I just like to uh, give them a little love tap first here. All right. Now I looked up the spec. It says 60 to 70 foot pounds. So I'm going to go 25, 45, 65. That sounds good. First, I'm going to just snug them down with uh, my little quarter-inch impact. Don't worry, this isn't going to tighten them too tight. That last little bit wasn't necessary. I just did that for your amusement. Now I'm going to give these another whack here just to uh, make sure. There's our seated. All right. I got my torque wrench set up here for 25. And this will click when you get there. Okay, that's there. So it looks like that little electric impact gets into at least 25. That surprises me. Now you guys are probably yelling at me right now that I'm supposed to be Working from center out. I will just just relax, guys. This is just the preliminary. Get the bolts all even. The final torque is the one that really matters. All right, so I'm going to go up to about 45. I'm sure you're not going to be able to see that. That's 45. That one moved a little bit. That one did too. I'm going to go completely bass backwards from the way you're supposed to and go end to end. In reality, this isn't going to really matter what sequence you do it as long as everything is going down evenly. And as I pull on this, they're all moving about the same amount, which is telling me that they're all equally in the block. Now, I did put oil on the thread, just regular old engine oil. And under the head of the bolt where it rubs on the cap, that's where all the force is that affects your torque. So now, I'm going to go up to 65. Uh, I'm going to go all the way to 70. I'm going to live on the dangerous side here. Okay. All right, so I'll make you guys happy. I'll start in the center and go out. Here we go. All right. Okay.
Okay. And we have a problem. Doesn't want to turn. All right. I have to diagnose that. Okay, I found the problem. It was my mistake. Remember I was telling you guys about the arrow on all the main caps pointing forward? Well, it turns out, number six, that one there, I had it on backwards. Once I saw that, I loosened those two bolts. The crank turns now. So that was my issue. So now I have to retorque that number six. So I'm going to set you guys down and get number six, 25, 45, 70. I'm glad that's all it was, it's just my stupidity putting that on. And I, you know, I probably would have caught it if I would have tried turning the crank after the first 25 pounds. I didn't. I'm an idiot. You, you already know you're dealing with an idiot here, so. All right, we'll go up to 45. 44, 45. Okay, go up to 70. Seventy. There. there we go. Okay, let's see if they turn. Yeah, see it turns now. Turns nice and easy. Now when you do this, there's a thing called plastic gauge. It's a little thread, a wax thread that you clamp in between the main cap, main bearing, and the crankshaft. When you torque it down, it smashes that wax, makes it wider. Then you measure the width of the wax to tell you your bearing clearances. I didn't bother filming all that, but they're like, uh, I'm just going to go around double check these. One and a half to two thousandths clearance is fine for a stock rebuild like this. Okay, so the crank is in, the crank turns. Next up will be installing pistons. I don't know if I'm going to go through all that on video or not. There's so many videos on YouTube right now, people putting engines together. You know, it's all the same. Look one of them up, watch them, maybe you'll learn something. Because right now you're learning from me how to screw it up. Put one of those bearing caps on backwards. And you can see the crank didn't want to turn. But now it does turn. So problem solved. Talk to you later.